Got all the floor mats down here. Now, when I did the slab, some of you might've noticed in that video, there's a video on that, that uh, didn't do a great job flattening because I didn't leave myself a way to screed it. So ended up adding some more concrete um, in the really low spots. And now we need to use some self leveler to level it out a little bit more. Then we can get to laying down the tiles and uh, really need to get the light situation in here going a little better. All right, self levelers has some time to cure. There were a few spots like right over here where on the old floor the slabs met that was really uneven. Didn't want that to be a problem, so he smoothed that out too. Also got some of my big machines in. They're gonna be isolated from the tile just in case. I mean, they're so heavy they shouldn't vibrate, but if they shift at all, they're not gonna buckle up the whole floor. I've had that happen on other tile floors before, and I needed to use the tractor to get those in here, and I figured trying to like turn that tractor around with all these heavy loads would probably just <coughs> those tiles everywhere. So. They're gonna be isolated, which is gonna be fine. Uh, I'm really excited because I put some lights up yesterday, but I hadn't hardwired in, them in, realized I had plugs, so, or yeah, regular cords, so I could just run them off an extension temporarily until I get everything hardwired. So it's like, I've got heat, I've got light, about to put down an awesome tile floor that uh, I'll talk more about later. And I've got some machines going in the shop, like it's coming together. This is really exciting. Anyway, let me get to it. Hit a minor snag. The directions even say you need a rubber mallet to get these together, but um, I have one rubber mallet and it's either, well, I know it's not in the office here because I looked, so it's either in my garage, one of the two box trailers or my storage unit um, because that's where my shop got all scattered to. So I had to run to the store real quick and get them, which is fine because it also made me remember that I bought some knee pads last time I was at Home Depot because that seemed like a really good idea for this project. And I'm waiting on the all the gray edging to get delivered, so I'm just using this black to help me uh, make sure I get the spacing right from the walls until the gray gets delivered. All right, making some progress. Callie just texted and said two boxes just got dropped off for me. So head up top, maybe it's the edge pieces. I hope so. I wouldn't call it fun, but it's definitely satisfying watching this go down, especially so quickly, like all that I've done, less than an hour, even with filming and everything. And uh, the knee pads have been a godsend. The rubber mallet is definitely a must. 
And one key, if you haven't spent a lot of time working on your knees and wearing knee pads, is try to keep your back straight. You're going to end up working on the floor just bending over a bunch. So whenever I can, I like to try to, you know, reverse bend a little bit, stretch out the back, and as much as possible, just keep it, keep it straight. Because the uh, back's going to get abused enough doing this. All right. Parallax group. Husky. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah, these are like 80 pounds together. I don't want to carry these. I've got a better idea. And I think four wheelers uh, tax write off for me now. Well, that's probably enough time spinning my wheels. Need to get back to it. The weather warmed up, then the t shirt, got the door open, some more light, so that's awesome. <sighs> really can't believe I'm here and I just got to ride my four wheeler around um, for a video for work. So thank you so much to my channel sponsors and video sponsors, and especially my Patreons for supporting the channel and what I do and watching all this and making this happen for me and my family. Utterly amazing. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you're new, you feel like I've earned it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video. And uh, anyway, back to time lapse mode. All right, day two, uh, got my cameraman back and we are, we finished laying this. Now it's time to do all the edging and trimming. As you can see, we started using the edges that come with it for here. However, in some places like along this wall, there's too much of a gap. The edge would end up here. So we're cutting tiles. Fortunately, this cuts really easy with just a straight edge and a razor knife um, and you're notching around the door and stuff. So that's what we're working on now. Of course, got our beautiful H in here, um, Husky H, Harris H, whatever you want the H to be for, kind of cool. And it's it's coming along. I will say, I wish I'd worn gloves yesterday after all that pounding. And if you're not used to doing a lot of pounding, for most leverage, you're not you're really using the handle if you're holding it up here. So make sure you're down here. And whenever you're doing a lot of pounding, if you're just wailing as hard as you can, you're not gonna last very long. And this is a big job. You don't want to wear out before the job's done. So key is a little bit of a loose grip and then use the hammer rebound and just let it come back up. Cause if you're just, ah, no way you're going to last as long as you need to. So, um, other than the blisters, I'm actually not too sore and all the squatting. Anyway, that's enough talking. I just don't want to get back on my knees, but, uh, I'll show you how we cut this stuff. In the beginning, I mentioned I wanted the big machines isolated, so that's why they went down first. Um, almost nailed my placement. We got just a little bit, so along this side, I need to just cut the, the little locking teeth off one edge, and that should fit nicely. As you see up front here, though, I could just go straight, but I'm going to notch around this just because I want to. I want to make it harder for myself, so let's do it.
All right, so realized a little too late that the bandsaw would be a great way to cut those tiles. Um, the razor knife worked really well, but it's just, you gotta score a bunch, and once you get through the top layer, then you can snap it and clean it, but bandsaw was a lot faster. Wish I thought of that sooner, and that sped everything up. That made it a lot faster to cut all the edges that were like the same size in some spots where we were a little short, and with that, we're done. This is a floating floor, so one thing to remember, got a little tight in some spots, but you wanna make sure you have at least an eighth to a quarter inch around the perimeter so that way the floor can float as it moves with uh, just temperature changes. This material will expand and contract a little bit. Um, few places I have are a little tight, but overall, things gonna be good. There are little gaps around the bottom. That's just the floor or from the wall and trying to keep the wall level. We'll come back with probably like a four inch baseboard, we'll rip out of some, some of the popular I have left over and do a baseboard at some point where we won't. The other thing that really helps me a lot is the acoustics. They said that this helps with acoustics. I wasn't sure how, because it's, uh, it's vinyl. So it's non-porous, concrete's porous, but they're both kind of hard. But I have noticed being in here, it has made the shop so much quieter between the acoustic treatment on the ceiling and now having this, I, I don't know, some of it's just the nature of vinyl or in particular the diamond plate pattern that helps scatter the sound waves. And so that when things are back, bouncing back and forth between the walls and keep going, if they hit the floor, it might help bounce it to the ceiling. I don't know, I'm not an AV guy, but the sound reduction and just having a softer floor Kudos. One thing to note for sure though, is this is not an anti-fatigue floor. So if you are looking for something for your legs, knees, and backs, while this does feel a lot better, technically it's not anti-fatigue. So you'd still want anti-fatigue mats at any stations are gonna be at a long time, which uh, once I figure out my flow a little bit better is something I will be looking into, but overall very happy with this. But anyway, thank you Home Depot for sponsoring this video. Really love this floor. It's uh, good at all temperatures, which isn't really an issue for me. The chemical and oil resistance is really good, but what is gonna save my butt is every time I drop my hand tools, I'd like cry in my old shop on that concrete. So this is definitely gonna save my tools from some accidents. But anyway, I hope you learned something, were inspired or at least entertained, and until next time, make time to make something.